everyone, if you're watching us, that means we're live and we don't know it yet. <laughs> Dave is testing to see if we are. Ooh, I'm so tired. Dun dun! Hello, live ladies and YouTube, gentlemen, sure. friends of all ages. The internet can totally see you now. Just stop, use your encoder. Stream health yellow. What? <laughs> Click no, over. it's DJ Hut. Oh, it's just the beginning? Woohoo! All right. Well, hello everyone. I think we're live, but Dave is just testing yes, to make sure we're right, all dude. on. Mm. Kathy, how you liking the book? <laughs> Did Kathy get a book? Yep. I think Kathy got one of the the studio books, one of the show books, and so it's it's a one of a kind. It has the one of a kind marks from the show somewhere yeah. inside of it. Let me switch to my account. Actually, so Kathy, me. is yours the one that has Dave's special comment in the front? I think it might be. <laughs> you weren't supposed to mention that. Why? Okay, so let's no. see what we've got. No. Can you yeah, I'm trying to tell me there. what people are saying? Are you going up? Hi, from Australia. Hi, Coralie. Hi, Lynn. Hey, San oh. Sandra, Vanessa, Wanda. Thank you, Lynn. Maurice? I can't say that. Where? Scroll up. Maricela. <laughs> What'd you say? Hey. Did somebody say that? Or are you telling me I should say that? Mike, the editor of the Dining and a Dime Cookbook? Yes. Damn Hello, cookbook. everyone. Today's recipe is not in our Dining on a Dime Cookbook. However, if you haven't gotten it, you might want to try it out. It's got a lot of awesome recipes. You could save a ton of money the first time you go to the grocery store. Dave, share the link. Hey, Jamie. So today, we're going to make guacamole tostadas. And tostadas. I, I'm going to do a test later this week, and hopefully I'd like to do something special on Monday. So we'll see. But... I have to, I happen to have these corn tortillas. I have we we just we usually buy tostada shells because it's a lot easier than making them. But we have these corn tortillas that are um, they're still good, but they're not as soft as they were. And so I'm just gonna do a, a little experiment while we're doing this. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna spray them with a little oil and stick them. Up. Normally we would fry them if we're gonna make tostada shells, but I'm just curious if I spray them with a little bit of this cooking oil and put them in the oven for 10 minutes if they will turn into something useful for this. And if not, well, I'll just use the ones that we normally use. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna spray that while Dave refers. Probably should deep fry. Right, yeah, Dave, nice. share with me any <laughs> comments that are in the comments. All these are saying hello. We're in the middle. Um, we're in the middle of a blizzard here in Buffalo, New York. Says Carol. Oh, I, no. I feel so sorry for all of you who have this like bitterly cold temperatures. Yeah, like the negative thirty Fahrenheit. Yeah, Tar said hashtag. That's why we live in Colorado, where it was down to five degrees this morning, but it's, it's forty-five bitter, degrees this afternoon. It's bitterly cold for Colorado, but yeah, it's not extraordinarily cold. So those of you who came early... Music, to music Matt says it's so blimmin' hot here. <laughs> oh, Christine, Tar says thank you for your soap order. Oh, Christine, Tara says thank you for your soap order, so yay. Um, this, so the recipe we're going to make today is not in the cookbook, but Dave has the recipe and he will share it in the comments. You can also go to livingonadime.com and it's on the front page right now. So it's for... It's actually homemade guacamole is the, the thing, but I went ahead and added the guacamole tostada recipe to the guacamole post. Oh. And it's funny, I think because I didn't call it guacamole, uh, my phone totally miswrote it <laughs> when I was posting the Instagram post. So it, it spelled it like guacamole. <laughs> so like multiple words, almost like that thing that is at the... <laughs> you know, uh, the little fairs and festivals. Whoa, Lisa says it's 45 degrees in Texas. Woohoo! Well, pretty, I guess that's cold for Texas. That's really cold for Texas, if I recall correctly. But that's practically shorts weather here in Colorado, <laughs> especially after it being 12, so, so cold. 12 degrees in West Virginia. Ooh, Lorraine got her mystery soapbox today. Thank you so much. Yay. All right, so today we're going to make guacamole. It is so easy. It's going to be fast. And so I decided to also make the guacamole tostadas, which are basically tostadas with guacamole and taco stuff on them. 
And then if there's time, I might go ahead and make Jack a quesadilla because we do those just to be easy. So Darlene says negative 25 here with wind chill. Ooh. Yikes. Where is that? Oh, that's up north somewhere, further up north. No idea where Darlene lives. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start working on this. Dave, can you go tilt down the camera, please? I will. We're operating with a little bit less of our technical crew than usual. So we're going to go ahead and tilt down to here. And let me zoom in real quick there. All right. Is that good? Uh, up just a little. Just Perfection. Here. There you go. All right. Okay, so, um, first of all, it's sometimes it's hard to get avocados that are not too hard, but these were perfect today. Tara actually got me some yesterday for the show that were a little harder, so I don't know how, I guess they must have ripened more in the store, because I think we bought them at the same store. So, again, guacamole is pretty easy. It's super tasty, and I can't believe, as a kid, I was kind of not very careful Oh wow, these are really soft. So I was gonna show you a little trick that Tara does sometimes. She cuts across uh, because it's easier to scoop them out. And then you can scoop them out and it makes these little cubes, but this is nice and soft. Can you see this okay? Oh, hang just a second. Uh, yeah, it yeah. looks like it. Uh, Ooh, this is nice and soft, so I really didn't need to do that, but I just cut that to show you. Wow, oh, this is so cubes. amazing. Oh, okay, so Dave is sharing the recipe, by the way. I am. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's on the front page at livingonadime.com, easy homemade guacamole. Wow, there that's delish. It's in the chat now. Yay. Yay. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to cut this one because it's so nice and soft. Can everyone believe it's almost February? Wow. What? Uh oh, Tar oh, yeah. says you won't get to see the January tree anymore. January when are you taking it down? Should we come on live briefly on Friday to show it while it's still up? Well, Friday is the beginning of February. Are you able to eat this guacamole right now, dear? Yeah. Okay. I just don't want to make too much of it if that's not the case. So the recipe calls for three medium avocados. The truth is we just kind of wing it. I made the recipe because I know some people out there are going to say, What? How do I do it if I can't measure it? totally avocados. missing it so I grew up in Austin Texas love Tex-Mex food and my parents and stuff would take us places occasionally and we would get Mexican food and it would have and there would be guacamole and I would think what is that nasty looking green stuff and as a kid and I never tried it I don't think I ever tried it it's me, it's, yeah. I think I was in about high school when we were eating fajitas at the Hyatt Regency in Austin and I don't know, for some reason I tasted it and I thought, oh, that is the best stuff ever. And I was probably 17 or 18 at that point. And I was thinking, I can't believe all this time I didn't eat this. And it was so amazing. So, wow. I love the, the skins. <laughs> They'd be kind of cool to use as some kind of little <laughs> kid's toy. All right, am I still in the shot? Yeah, it looks like. All right. There so, you go. Yes, you are. following the recipe, I'm going to add, oops, um, so I have the avocados here, I slice them and slit them in there. Um, usually we'd just use lime juice like this, but limes were cheap today, so I thought I'm going to be fancy and use actual limes. Were they that cheap though? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Sorry. So, yay. The lime... Uh, so now I'm squeezing this in, but uh, the recipe actually calls for a tablespoon of lime or lemon juice. And wow, that's actually a lot of juice. Um, I could probably put a little more. The truth is, it doesn't really matter if it's a... If you don't want too much because you don't want the whole thing to taste like a lime. But this does kind of help reduce the browning. Because if you're not familiar with avocados, they have this pretty green color. And if you let it sit out on the counter for about an hour or two, it turns all brown. <laughs> And the lime juice adds a little bit of flavor, but it also helps keep it from turning brown. Okay, so one teaspoon of garlic powder. Uh, I'm not actually gonna, well, maybe I will measure it just since we put it on there. I have not been back to Austin since 2000, was it? Does the board know? 
Well, when was that? 2006 or seven? Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. Unfortunately, we were there to move a family member who was... Um, who had dementia and um we just had to go move all her stuff and so my cousins that were with me from chicago well from up north were um they didn't really want to stay very long so i didn't get to spend as much time visiting all the places i wanted there so it's been a long time since i've been back actually i'm just going to shake some salt in here we normally don't measure this i just put the measurements on there for uh just to just, just to appease the people who need them. <laughs> okay, so I, I put in the avocados, I put in the lime juice, the garlic powder, and the onion powder, and the salt. So at this point, you can just mash it and mix it. Oh, I forgot. Nothing. Did, nothing. Is mom talking to us? No, not to you. Okay. Um, <laughs> at this point, you can mash them with a... I usually mash them with a fork. Can you see that all right, Dave? Yeah. Mr. Camera Dave. Um, Sorry, I'm doing like five. <laughs> the recipe has, sometimes we will add other things to it, but this, this by itself is going to be perfectly yummy. But the recipe also includes, if you, as optional items, salsa. Tara will sometimes put salsa in there, a little bit of salsa. Uh, or I will take some Roma tomatoes and cut, up, cut them into, or kind of dice them and stick little pieces in here. Just Mostly I just do it for color. Um, but you don't really have to do anything besides just these first few ingredients for it to t uh, taste really delish. I actually got the Roma tomatoes for the tacos or the tostadas we're going to make, the guacamole tostadas. Oh man, man, I sure got a lot of avocados, didn't I? So this is two avocados worth. That's quite a bit. That's probably two cups of guacamole there. Yum. This smells so delish already. <laughs> Let's see, do I have my countdown timer on this? One minute and 15 seconds. Go, 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 go. Okay, that's probably a perfect consistency right there. You can make it thinner if you want. I think Tara usually makes it just a little thinner and some people make it more thick, but I think that's perfect. Um, Sharon said cilantro. I'm, I didn't get any cilantro today and we don't normally put it in, but you can put it in. It, it, it can add a little bit of nice flavor to it, but um, we don't. We say it's optional, and I'm not going to add any today. I think I'm going to probably not add anything else to this. If you want to know, oh yes, <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting some reports. Yes. So one thing that is, you can freeze this guacamole. So you just take it and you put it in a little, uh, just a little freezer bag. You know, a little zippy, little Ziploc bag. Um, what we do is we, if we get the avocados for cheap, sometimes it'll be like three for a dollar or something, and Tar will buy a ton of them. And we'll make a whole bunch of guacamole, and we'll stick, you know, certain amount, about serving sizes in these bags. So if we think it, Tar and I are the ones that mostly eat it. And so we'll just put enough for us and maybe the other kids to dabble in a little bit in the freezer bags. And then... When you want to use them, you just take them out of the freezer and you can leave them on the counter for a little while and they'll be fine. Or you can put them under warm water if you want to defrost them real fast. So I'm going to briefly check real at these. I'm not sure if I'm going to have Dave turn the camera up, but these uh, tortillas I was trying to make, uh, they're not crunchy. So well, they're my stiff. tortilla experiment is not proving anything so far. So I'm gonna leave them in a little bit longer and see. I mean, they're stiffer, to be honest. Yeah, they are a little stiffer, but normally I... Oh, do you need like chip consistency for that? Like chip consistency. Oh. Okay, so there's the guacamole. I'm gonna go ahead and take the taco shell, or the tostada shell. The tostada. La tostada. Okay, actually before I do that, I'm... Hmm? Well, I just have optional to taste on the recipe. I know. Oh, so Tara says to share, Tara, who's not on the show, says to share that if you don't like cilantro, go ahead and leave it out. All right, I'm going <clears> to <throat> prep myself for the tostadas now. Oh, Jack is here. Uh, and what I'm going to do for the tostadas is I'm going to use these to tostada shells that we bought already made. 
which is what we normally do to make it easier. But I have often, I have occasionally fried the corn tortillas uh, in oil in a pan. It doesn't have to be very much oil because you want them to stay flat. So I'm gonna take the tostada shell and put it here. Hello everyone who's just joining us. We are in the middle of putting the ava, the, the guacamole, guacamole on the tostada. On a... Oh, this smells so delicious. Wait, what is that called? This is a tostada shell. Oh yeah, we're putting the guacamole on the tostada shell and then we're gonna put all this other stuff on it. Should have you get your camera, I forgot all about that. Okay, oh, yeah, I'll be right so I'll put a little guacamole on there and some cheese. So I, I listed on the recipe tostada shells, guacamole, shredded lettuce and all that. Um, I usually put a little bit of cheese on and you can do whatever ingredients you like. But I, there are some listed on the recipe that are some of the better ones. And then we'll put some lettuce. Sadly, this lettuce wasn't quite as green as I was hoping, but this is iceberg because that's what we had. Hang on, Dad. I'm getting my and we'll put some onions. And I got the red onions just because they're pretty. And if you like sour cream, you can put it on here. And I like it okay, but I'm trying not to eat as much and it just adds a lot. And I'm gonna add some, also some black olives because they're yummy. And rather than spend any time cutting them, I'm just gonna smash them up in little pieces. It's much easier. Wow. <laughs> That's looking nice. All right. Num. Okay, Jack, <coughs> I honestly think I'm gonna have you help turn the camera up. Let me switch over so I can see the camera. Oh, you can't see it very well. So that's what it looks like, the guacamole tostada. Oh, I forgot to do the tomatoes. So if you like tomatoes, these romas are really nice. Um, and I'm not that fond of the tomatoes for the taste, but I like them for the color because half of what makes the food taste good is how it looks. So I'm gonna take some little but pieces. But it doesn't look as good as me, does it? No, nope. no it does not. Actually careful, I don't want to disconnect that. Okay, so I actually was gonna have them tilted up. So since Dave isn't here yet, oh dude, I should wait till he gets here so we can take a picture of this one. Are you coming, Dave? Oh, have mercy, that is good guacamole. Oh, you ate it? <laughs> Look at that, guys. Wow! That oh. is a guacamole tostada. It is so delicious. Except oh, before yum. I eat it, I'm going to have Dave take a quick picture of it. Except, oh, hmm. Picture. Could you have a clean plate? Yeah, here. What's up, Brandon? There we go. Here, Dave, take a picture of that. Uh, Jack, why don't you go ahead and tilt up the camera for me, please? Holy guacamole! <laughs> All right. So, sorry guys, we're a little bit short on production crew, so I'm going to... I'm doing this part here myself. Okay, there we go. So Dave is taking pictures. You just got your hand in it. Okay. All right. Hang on, sorry, this is the process where I take 50 pictures of the mm -hmm. same thing. Make it look delicious. Hang Tara on. said the guacamole is delish, and Jack is, oh, we should get that. Jack, come over here and try it. Come over here. Try the guacamole on camera. Tell them what you think about it. Oh. <clears throat> here. We're gonna see. I don't like it. You didn't like it? No, I didn't. Okay, you he tried like it though. Molly, but you tried it. He dipped right in and tried it, so that's Let's awesome. Do we have any other me. just regular chips? I used chips? to like it, but I don't really. Nice. Oh, oh, it's share it on there. Oh, they can't... Dave, that looks oh, that's awesome. Do you have any wider shots though? Because the focus is a little. Yeah. Out. So. Yes, I do. I do. That looks professional. So guys, we didn't have a picture. Uh, did you cook? Oh, did I cook the sh the shell first? I did not because these ones we just we just bought already done. Although I do have some in the oven that I am testing um, because if you want to do them, you can actually get really fancy and fry the tortilla shells. So what I would do is I would take some oil. I guess I could do one. I would think I should do one while I'm on. I would take a little bit of oil and fry it in a pan. So why don't I do that and then we can demonstrate and I'll build another one from that. I thought you were making a quesadilla. 
I am going to make a quesadilla, but not with... Oh, are you saying I shouldn't? No. I may make a quesadilla for Jack. Or if not, I'll make it after the show. So I'm going to just, just for, just for those who have not seen these fresh, I'm just going to put a little oil in here. I'm going to fry this mm, shell sorry. or this tortilla in oil to make a more fresh tostada shell. But that one really looks good. Cool. I have a lot of, I have a lot of further out. So I'm going to go ahead and taste this now. You are free to taste it. I've taken all. Now the that Dave is taking the pictures, Tara said this guacamole is really good. Mmm, yum. Why am I cooking? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. A little bit messy. I'll stick with muffins, friend. Mmm. <laughs> That's really good stuff. Did you think it had enough salt? Well, it's maybe use a tiny bit more, but it's actually really good. Mmm. La Mufan. Tara said, why am I doing the cooking? <laughs> but you know me, I believe salt could use more salt, so... <laughs> yeah, salt could use more salt. Okay, I'm going to pull these, the chest out of the oven here and see. Uh-oh. So these ones that I... These ones that I tried to do in the oven, I don't think that's going to be a great idea. I am waiting for this. Well, I think they were kind of a weird consistency. And then when I... Um, then when I left them in a few more minutes, now they're really dark. I'm going to let them sit for a minute and see if they, how they turn out. But I'm going to fry one up because the fried ones turn out better usually. But we normally, just to make it easy, we buy the, sh the shells at the store already done. What? We forgot the sour cream. Do we have sour cream? Mm -hmm. Man, that is, that is so good, guys. And again, if you have extra guacamole, you can... Put it in a zip in Ziploc bags in the amounts that you want and freeze it. We just put them in the bag and then kind of flatten the bag. We'll zip it up and then zip it up with no air and then flatten the bag and freeze it. And it's great because then you can just pull it out anytime and have some. And if there's any extra, we'll do that. I'm going to do an experiment today because I saw somebody on the internet say that if you put it in a container and put a little bit of water over the top, white and store it in the fridge that it won't brown and I'm curious to see if that's true so I'm going to test that after the show today with what's uh, left wants to know if this, is in the cookbook. this is not in this cookbook however should we add it to the new one yes uh, yeah. did I, you use I'm just, cabbage or lettuce I use lettuce but I used here I'm gonna I hear that uh, I used Iceberg lettuce, because that's what we had. I would probably normally use something like romaine, just because I like, I think the color makes it present better. So people Don't kind worry. of feel like it tastes better when we it's can more Photoshop colorful. It. That's why I did the <laughs> tomatoes and the red onions and everything, because the presentation just adds a lot. Mm. Well, Jack, I'm glad you tried that. So guys, is right now I'm just frying this one tortilla in a pan just to see how it would turn out. Normally, if we do this, we would have a uh, more oil in the pan and a bigger pan. Take the, Share the recipe, Dave. Oh yeah, take the pancake thing and push it down. You don't want the bubble. Yeah. So I'm just. I think because I think it was Stormy that was asking if I cooked the shell, and so I'm going to actually cook one and see, and then I'm going to put some more of this on there. Although, what am I going to do if I have two of them? I'll have to eat them both. Uh, I think Tara and I, we actually use, we will make this for just for dinner for ourselves. Just one or two of these. It's plenty of food and it tastes great and it's fresh. And you don't really have to cook anything when you make it. Yes, Jack? Someone was wondering if you could use lemon juice instead of lime juice. Someone was asking if you could use lemon juice? Yeah, instead of lime juice. Yes, you can use lemon juice instead of lime juice. Lime has a slightly different flavor. Uh, but lemon juice works fine for mostly keeping the keeping it green, which is the main goal. All right, I'm gonna just oops. Except I think I'm not paying attention to this. Oh, have mercy! That's good. I'm not paying attention to this tortilla. So the ones that I baked, they turned a little bit kind of extra brown. Oh, they would be really good this way. Uh huh. Man. I thought they'd work. So. <laughs> So a little tip, I just uh, I just learned it. It's a pro tip that I just learned. <laughs> so I think the recipe is dining. We took the uh, 
tortilla, just regular old corn tortillas, where did I put them? And they were not quite as fluffy as usual, and I sprayed both sides with, um, with the baking spray, the baking oil. And you can eat it, that's fine. And I just put it in the oven for about, I put it in 10 minutes and then about five more minutes. And now they're nice and crispy. Uh, so this would have an even more fresh taste than the ones that you buy in the pack at the store. I'm gonna put a little more guacamole on here and try that. Whoops. Hmm, man. Oh guys, this is so delish. I'm not sure why I needed to fry this one. So there's the fried one. I'll try that in a minute too. Oh, it's black on the other side. Did I burn it? No. Oh. I it's black that on that one little. part, but. All right. And I also, well, we'll see what kind of questions and answers everybody has. Oh. Here you go. Here, I'll let you sit here. You So in the toaster oven, you would still spray them with oil, right? Gotta switch places. Yeah, Tasha says Tasha said it. Tasha said you can uh, put the the Jennifer. tortillas or Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer said you can put the tortillas in a toaster oven and they turn out really well. I think Tara said she would still probably spray them with a little bit of oil so that they kind of crunch up. Ooh, you can put leftover avocado avocado in brownies in place of some of the oil. Now, why would you ruin good brownies and good avocado doing that? <laughs> I will have to make this for my husband soon. Yes, one thing that's cool about this, if you buy off, if you buy guacamole at a restaurant, it's like eight or nine dollars, and and you can buy it at the uh, grocery store, and it's pretty pricey there too. Although we've done that maybe at Costco or somewhere, it's not as expensive, but it's easy to make, and if you can get the if you can get the avocados when they're not frightfully expensive, then it turns out beautifully. Uh, did you? Did I cook the shell? Oh, uh, yes, Stormy. So I'm doing the shell experiment right now. Good evening, Denise. Did you see my, oh, oh yes. Again on the cilantro, since a couple people are asking, you don't have to put cilantro in it. And I did not put it in this, although it does add a kind of a nice flavor, but it's on the recipe in case you want to use it. And I did not put sour cream on it, Godfrey. But again, you can. That's the thing is it's, it's easy to modify to whatever taste you like. And I guess we have sour cream and I didn't realize it, but I sort of trained myself not to eat as much because I'm needing to keep my calories down. All right, so I'm looking through the Facebook at the moment, but I'm gonna switch over to YouTube. Yes, it's not in, so we have our Dining on a Dime cookbook. It's not in this cookbook, but we're making a, Second Here, I'll book, share the link. and we'll probably add this one to this recipe to this book. And Dave's sharing the link. Dave is sharing the link to where you can get this book if you want to save money on your groceries and you don't have this. You can make a lot of uh, easy homemade stuff on here, and most people save as much as the cost of the book their first time to the grocery store. Uh, if you're outside the United States, we do ship them to you, but they're more expensive for the shipping, sadly, because um, it just costs that much for us to actually send them. So I have this one I fried and it's a little hot still. Oh, okay, so it's probably not terrible. So the one I fried by just putting it in oil in the pan, its crunch is a lot better than the crunch of the one that I sprayed. But they're both really good. It's just this is the one that I sprayed here is less greasy. So it's really good. But again, if you're busy and you have a, a big family and kids and everything's crazy, don't hesitate to buy the ones at the store. Although to be honest, these the homemade ones do taste a lot better. A tostada is kind of like a taco on a flat round shell. It's a flat. Where you taco. basically take a tortilla and you fry it. Uh, you can fry it or bake it like this, and then you just put put the stuff on top. And for most tostadas. We would put like chicken or beans, um, beans, chicken, maybe some beef, and uh, like cheese and all the same stuff we put on the guacamole tostada. And so it's kind of like a taco on a shell. Actually, that the slow cooked roast that we have, hmm, yeah, the fried one is the best. <laughs> the slow cooked roast recipe 
you can go to our website livingonadime.com and type in slow cooked roast. It's like the best recipe ever and it's super super easy. But that roast when it's left over it makes really good things like tostadas. Uh, I was gonna make a quesadilla for Jack. I may not make it on the show. We'll see. There's nothing um, in the oven, but, but so quesadillas are like two flour tortillas with uh, all kinds of stuff in the middle. Although Jack only really likes cheese. Can I turn off the oven? Oh yeah, you can turn off the oven. Sure but resting me. <laughs> but that slow cooked roast is super delicious in things like quesadillas too, and in Weesh. on tacos and on these tostadas. It's just amazingly delish. We should make fried cheese for the rolls. Uh -huh. Hmm. Thank you, Audiana. I wasn't sure how many people would know what Ike Godzi's store is. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Can you explain to all of us, like, who don't know? Um, yes. So, if you're young, you might not know about, there's a show called The Waltons, which was a pretty cool show about a family in the depression in the United States and it's really it was really a popular show in the 1970s and early 80s and um, Tara really liked the show when we first got married and, and it's really a nice it's a good fun clean show and uh, Ike Godsey's Ike Godsey's store was a store in the show and Ike Godsey's one of the characters so a couple of years ago Tara went to uh, Virginia and visited the house where the Walt, the actual Walton's family lived because it was based on a true story. Oh, okay. So everybody wants to know how to keep avocados from turning brown. Okay, so how to keep avocados from turning brown. Uh, oh. When you find out, tell me. No, just kidding. <laughs> Someone had a really good idea. So there are a variety of things people say and I think a lot of them don't work that well. One of them that does work pretty well is uh, the lime and lemon juice. That keeps them sort of temporarily. Um, I've heard you could put a seed in there, but that really hasn't been the avocado seed. Leave it in there. Someone said if you put onions in the same container as an avocado, it will not turn dark. Hmm, okay. But the avocado seed thing we've tried, it doesn't seem like it works that well. <gasps> hey! Um, the, Man, they've said that somebody up. said put uh, onions put in the onion same container. The we have not tried that. The thing I think is most likely to work I'm gonna go ahead and make myself one on the on the edge of the fried shell because I like that one the best. Um, I think what's most I, I better save enough to do this to test it, but I think the one that's most likely to work. I saw somebody online had mentioned um, putting a little bit of putting it in a container like this, and then putting some water on top of it. And the thing is. I know some people say, ooh, gross, water in your guacamole. It's not really in it. It would just sit on top of it. But the reason why it turns brown is because it oxidizes, meaning that it has a chemical reaction with the air, and the chemical reaction causes it to turn brown. So if you had chemistry in school, uh, something on the surface of the, of the guacamole or of the avocado just reacts with the air and does that. I thought it was so does anybody else want any more before I... Nah, I'm washing off the seed because I like the look. So of it. I'm gonna try this, and the next time we come on, I will report whether it worked or not. But I'm well, just gonna put some flat in the bottom of this container, and I'm just gonna put a little water on the top and see. The lady that I saw recommending it said that she she just puts enough to cover up the guacamole and then sticks it in the refrigerator. And we did put the lime juice in here, but that really will only keep it from browning for maybe 24 hours. Uh, so if it lasts. If it seems to be doing great and still looks vibrantly green with the water, then we'll know that works. I'm gonna test this spoon now. Mm, yum. Man, this stuff is so good and it's so easy to make. How long do the seeds last? How long is it wet? Will the seed eventually cripple up and die? Yeah. If, if I just take the, if I just take the Why seed out and keep it? Why you made your chicken fried steak with cornflakes instead of cracker crumbs and loved it? Yay. Tanya? Yes. So Tanya made the chicken fried steak with cornflakes instead of cracker crumbs and she loved it. Cracker? We use cracker crumbs in there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hey, the... if you can grow that seed. Yeah, I was just searching so, where it grows at. So I'm just putting the guacamole in what with a tiny bit of water over the top in the refrigerator right now. And then the next time we're on, I will tell everyone who remembers to ask that how it works. I suspect it's going to work though. 
because I, I understand the logic behind why. So, <laughs> so I'm doing some tostada experiments now. I'm making myself one on the edge of this. I don't want to have too many because I've got, I've got the whole one that I made at the beginning on the pre-made shell, and I've got some on the baked shell. <laughs> I just wanted to try this. So what does Leanne have to say? Wait, Leanne L? Yep. Uh, I love this cookbook. I went through and did a big shopping for all the ingredients for so many recipes. And so far all of them I have made were hits with the family. And what cookbook is that? And it's our Dining on a Dime 20th Anniversary or Great classic, I don't know which one. But it's our Dining on a Dime cookbook, and I'll be sharing the link to go buy that. Yep, so Dining they're talking about our Dining on a Dime cookbook, and this one, it has lots of great recipes for homemade things. And somebody was just talking about the chicken fried steak in here, which is probably my favorite recipe. We actually make it with hamburger, but it tastes just like the restaurant chicken fried steak, and it's super tender, so you can eat it with a fork without, you don't have to have anything to cut it with. You cut the seed. And it's a lot less expensive, so it's really delish. But there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, homemade enchiladas, which I have made on the show a number of times, and the only reason I haven't made it recently is just because I make them a lot, the enchiladas on the show. And probably because it, Tara was on a, she was on a fast, and I always thought I was the only one that was going to eat them. But you killed it. <laughs> so I made a little bit on here. Mmm. Mm. Okay, Stormy. Oh, wait, Stormy. I highly recommend that you make... Okay, so after doing this experiment on the air, these tosada shells are fine if you're in a hurry, but I strongly recommend taking tortillas and then frying them in a pan. My like church Stormy is on. What temperature did you bake them? Uh, okay, so I did two things. I baked some, and the ones I baked, I sprayed on both sides with... Uh, cooking spray like Pam and I put them on the baking sheet and I baked them at 400 degrees for about I did 10 minutes and then I did five minutes but they're a little bit dark colored so I might have gone just slightly less and they actually turned out pretty well that way but then I put some oil in a frying pan and I just fried one as a test and the fried one really has a lot better taste and it crunches better so it probably has more calories though it has more calories so and if you're grease and all that if you're not too concerned about the calories, or if you only eat one, then I would recommend the frying, <laughs> to be honest. So, but it's really, these are all delish, and I hate to be eating them in front of you, but I hate to let them, I guess they're not going to get cold, are they? Oh, Arlene says, my daughter-in-law, who doesn't cook, is now cooking with your cookbook. I will be ordering another one, lol. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Leanne says, it has made a huge difference on our budget. No more eating out for most of January. Was able to, wait, was save able to so save so much money to pay down on bills. Love you guys. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Actually, one thing that's really cool about that is, really, it's not that hard to cook the stuff that you buy at the restaurant. So instead of spending uh, like $30 for two people to eat out, you could spend five or ten dollars for the entire family to eat something that's really good that tastes uh, pretty much like the restaurant for a lot of the food and actually it's funny because as we were re-editing it to release our 20th anniversary edition here that we came out with in December I came across some recipes we haven't made in a while but like the uh, oh I forgot suddenly what it's called dear what is a recipe that you made me the first thing you ever cooked for me? Yeah. It's a beef stroganoff in there. It's really good. And at the time, I had only ever had, growing up, my family would make the beef stroganoff that was like the uh, rice, not rice aroni. What was that stuff called? Hamburger helper kind. And so when Tara said beef stroganoff, I was thinking, ew. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't bad as the hamburger helper kind, but then her beef stroganoff is the one that's in the book. It was much, much better than that. And that was the first thing she ever cooked for me on our like second date. Because our first date, we spent 17 hours together in the Rocky Mountain National wait, Park. Wait, wait, I missed it. Did she trip the fire alarm? <laughs> no, believe it or not. What? 
What's oh funny my is goodness. it was really delicious, but the first time I met her family, her grandparents and cousins and stuff, they had these big stories about Tara like <laughs> incinerating everything she tried to cook. But that hasn't really been my experience with her and uh, she's what gotten world to be are you living in. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, not really. It's not that bad. And since since we did the cookbook and all, it's just getting better and better. So yay! <laughs> so let me see what other questions do we have. Are we going to do a show on Friday? Uh, we might. Who you knows? know, uh, I'm not sure if we'll do a show on Friday, but we'll pro it's likely we'll come on and just chit chat with everybody since that seemed to be really popular last week. So for those of you who don't know, we technically <laughs> yes, White Dove, you're right. How could I possibly not eat it? This is so delicious. So it's kind of messy because I've, I've been doing experiments. So this is the original tostada, which is half eaten. <laughs> and then this is the baked uh, shell I made. And I just put some guacamole on there to try it. And then this is the fried shell, which by far is the best. So taking a regular tortilla and frying it in some oil. I didn't add anything else but just oil and fried it for like, I don't know, a minute. And it was super delicious. But um, I keep on falling asleep. I forgot. Oh, Friday, the Friday show. So officially we don't have a Friday show, but Dave and I have come on the last two Fridays and just chatted with people and it seems like it's going pretty well. So it's likely we'll do that again this week. If you join, uh, Patreon, if you don't, no, no. if you don't see us on, then we changed our minds. Uh, and that's why I say it's not an official show because it's a, uh, whether we want to or not. Yeah. Oh, Tammy Tar said she saw that you missed her and she said thanks. She's still talking about coming back, but oh, Colleen chicken fried steak, yes. Um, ooh, Faith says the show making chicken fried steak was the first time I saw you folks, either live or recorded. Well, it's really good, and the for those of you who don't know, we actually make it with hamburger, so it's less expensive, but it tastes just like the restaurant kind. It's it's really amazing. So if you haven't tried it and you have Dining on a Dime, do the chicken fried steak. It's in both this one and the Just classic version. do it! <laughs> and it's, it's my most favorite. Where did the name come from? Oh, uh, it's Margaret's birthday today. Ooh, all right. If you're tired of starting over. <laughs> <laughs> so chicken, if you're asking where did the name chicken fried steak came from, I think it's just, um, it's got, it's basically like a fried chicken type coating. And... Uh, and they, they applied it to steak instead of chicken. Mike, you're killing me. Yes. Oh man, these tostadas are really good. I highly recommend that you guys go out and make some over the weekend and <gasps> birthday. let Margaret. us know how they turned out for you. Margaret? Oh, sorry, I was not paying attention. It's, Margaret B? It's our faithful, faithful viewer, Margaret B. He always sends us encouraging Maybe practice. we should do... She's 80 today. We should do a 20... 80? Oh, Margaret, that's awesome. <laughs> So, yes, we're going to sing happy birthday to Margaret, who's 80 today, and she's one of our most faithful viewers who send us all kinds of care packages, and we really love her, so we're going to... Well, we do happy birthday songs for a lot of people, but but Margaret, we can't possibly miss not singing to you, so here we go. Ready? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Margaret, happy birthday to you. Dave. We love you, Margaret. Yay! We love Happy you. Birthday. One, one Happy blow. birthday. Happy ah, birthday. That, just <laughs> The candle smells nice. We should do a 24 hour live stream of growing an avocado tree. <laughs> Sorry, that's totally <laughs> random. Growing an avocado tree, but not in Colorado. That would be crazy. Well, you Ooh. could indoors. Patty, just made your Mexican hamburger casserole from your new cookbook. Yummy. Yes. Okay, you sit down. Actually, there are so many good recipes. Sit your butt down. And I hate to make too much of a stink about it because it's going to be a while, but we're working on a second one. So they the 20... Know if there's the same recipes in the second one. So this 20th anniversary edition is an expanded edition of the original. So this one has more stuff, but it's basically a, a fancier version of the original. But there's a new book that we're in the midst of that I'm hoping we can send to the printer early in the summer and have ready before the summer is over, hopefully. Uh, and that one would be all new recipes. And since this guacamole was so good and these tostadas were so amazing, I think we'll put those in there. And actually, 
I was planning on testing another recipe next week that if it turns out might put it in there. It's not so cheap, but it's re it, it, if it turns out well, it should be really delicious. So yes, so this is an expanded one. If you have the original Dining on a Dime, this one has more stuff, but you may or may not want to get the new one if you have the original one. Uh, but if you're, if you're like a, a super serious fan and you're here a lot, there's some stuff in here you might like, like uh, extra stuff, which is like recipe cards from... So this, for those of you who don't know, this cookbook is from uh, like 70 years of Tara's family for, I don't know, five generations or something. And also I have a couple recipes in here and our sister-in-law Shayla has some recipes in here. But uh, we actually included in the new one recipe cards from Tara's great-grandmothers and grandmothers and mom and everybody and even Tara's are in there. Pictures with little stories like there's the house that we lived in when we made the first book and a little bit about that. At the beginning there's a story kind of of how we published the book and what we did. Oh and look there's even an inscription to me. <laughs> Tiffany thanks for watching. <laughs> so Anyway, so that's kind of the difference on that. But their new book will be all new recipes and things. So. Cheryl's birthday is tomorrow, so wish her happy birthday tomorrow. Happy Yay, birthday, happy birthday, Cheryl. Cheryl. Uh, should we sing, we should happy sing one more, but a minute. we're going to sing in just a minute, though. Um, do you have this on a low quality setting? Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it all the way down. Okay, I was like, this doesn't look very good. The computer was burning out. Yay. Uh, only cut avocados with a plastic knife. Oh, hey, that's one thing. You know when I was showing you guys cutting the avocado with the knife crossways like Tara does? Don't do that. I was doing it in my hand, but really it's not safe to do that in your hand. So if you're going to do that, I would set it on something so you don't cut yourself. Um, and, oh, Elizabeth says only cut with a plastic knife. Uh, Dude, oh. Put in a container, put... Push pit straight into the middle, cover with plastic wrap that you're touching the wok and the pit so there's no air. Hmm. Okay. I've heard that you could do that with the plastic wrap, but the person that I saw didn't seem to have had the greatest success. So we might have to try that too and see. Shannon! All right, good to see you today. That looks delish. It is delish. Man, we should make extra and have everybody come over. Have we taken the family to the Grand Canyon? We have not. Um... Tara and I have both been, and BJ and Ellie went on, they were kind of doing this uh, expedition last summer where they would just get in the car and go somewhere. And they went to quite a few places. Uh, they went, they drove, we're north of Denver, so they drove to Salt Lake City and went to In-N-Out Burger. But then they went to the Grand Canyon at one point and they did a whole lot of stuff down there. So they've been there. But I think I'd like to take the younger boys because I think they would be impressed. Actually, I think they would like the Meteor Crater that's out there. Although, honestly, the meteor crater is the kind of thing where you walk up to it and you're like, whoa, that's cool. And about 30 minutes later, you're like, okay, what can we do now? <laughs> but it's cool to see this giant hole in the ground. So uh, I have not yet taken them there. So I'm looking to see lots of people talking about uh, things that, so people, what can be used instead of guac? Uh, Oh, on the tostadas. I'm sorry. Totally blew my mind. Uh, if you don't... So you can... These are guacamole tostadas, but you can use... It's very common to use beans, like refried beans as a base. Uh, but you don't have to use the beans, but you can use refried beans. You can use chicken. Uh, steak or uh, roast would be really delicious. Hamburger. Pork. Um, and then, of course, you put the same kind of toppings on, so... Typically, that might be cheese and lettuce, black olives if you like them, um, and Roma tomato. Well, tomato, any kind of tomatoes, but the Romas seem to be the thing with Mexican food. I'm not a major tomato devotee, so I'm not sure if, if there's a difference in the taste that's dramatic. But uh, So you can use all those different kinds of things as bases for the tostadas, and they're very easy. They're basically like flat tacos, <gasps> but you can pile them up and... <laughs> They can be messy because sometimes uh, a big chunk of the shell might come off all at once, but but they're really delish and they're easy to make. You can also make the Spanish rice the dime on a dime. Oh, right. And do we have the refried beans in here too? We do? Tara says we have Spanish rice 
and refried beans both in Dining on a Dime. And I think at least the Spanish rice is also on the website. So you could make uh, like tostadas and rice and beans. Okay, that's kind of an interesting mix now that I think about it. Well, the other thing is the enchilada recipe that's in here. I love making these enchiladas. Wait, is, are the rolled enchiladas in here or just the stacked? Check the index. We have stacked enchiladas in here. Yeah, let's see if the rolled ones are in here. So uh, Leanne says we should put our picture on the side of the bus and travel the country. What's funny is we have had people recognize us. Oh yes, here they are. Yeah, the cheese in, there's cheese enchiladas in here. They're really delicious. And with the Spanish rice and the refried beans, you can make a whole like Mexican restaurant kind of meal. <laughs> What's funny is I use American cheese when I make these enchiladas. Basically, I put American cheese and onions and roll them up and put Tara's homemade enchilada sauce here on. The cool thing about this enchilada sauce, the enchilada sauce at the store most of the time causes me heartburn, but this enchilada sauce doesn't. And I'm, I'm thinking there's some kind of ingredient in there like the yeast or MSG or something that's doing what? that. And we don't put that in the homemade what is MSG? recipe. It's a flavor enhancer, and I I don't know that I have trouble with MSG and other foods. So I'm not sure that's it, but but we can make that entire Mexican meal out of the book here. And I'd like to add more Mexican type recipes in the new book. So I'm working on experimenting on some of those. So all right, it's awesome, so tasty. Yes, ooh, loving the chicken fried steak recipe. Yeah. All right, let me switch over here and look on. <laughs> that face on the <gasps> screen. My mother-in-law made guacamole with green peas instead of avocados. <laughs> Bless her heart is the phrase that comes to mind. Yes, Megan, I'm not sure the peas would have quite the same flavor. <laughs> Although I guess if you put enough garlic and uh, onion stuff and lime juice and <laughs> cilantro and stuff, you might be able to fool people. <laughs> so, yeah. Right wow. So we need to get a bus and so come insane. to all the cities and meet and greet. And what's funny is... I would love to, to be honest, but these people... We've had... So we had meet up, a couple meetups in Colorado. And uh, when we were taking our son, our oldest son to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, uh, we were going to have a meetup there. But we were trying to protect the people whose house we were meeting at so we didn't publish their address. And we, we were... So it ended up, I think a lot of people may not have come because they didn't want to have to call us to ask where. But we saw, we were at Aldi one day in Rochester and somebody came up and recognized Tara right away. So, so here's my idea. Oh, oh no, she no. has an idea. I have an idea. We are I think dead. we should travel the country and go into people's houses and show them how they could save money. We're doomed. <laughs> I think that's great. Not what really. would you guys think of that if we went to people's houses? I mean... We might even ask them first. It's basically... <laughs> and then walk shift. around the house and say, you know, here's some ways you could save money just from what we can observe. And add up all the ways they could save money in their house and show oh, them how where, they could save. Where are your receipts for the last three months? <laughs> I bet if we went into the typical American middle class house, I could find $100,000. I know I could. Oh, I wow. bet I could. Wow. I'm afraid I think that's to do great. This. Does everybody like that idea? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so let's see. Cheryl has a birthday. Is there anyone else that we missed on birthdays while we're about to sing again? Let me take a quick look here. Dun dun. I don't see any others, but we're going to take a quick look. Yeah. <laughs> Music Mad says, just turn up, please. I would love to turn up at your house. <laughs> Maybe come down to the pub with you and I forgot what that food was. You said that was really good. There. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, Music Mad is in Ireland? No. She's in New Zealand. I mean, New oh, New Zealand. I didn't know they had pubs there. Yep. Sorry, I'm very unfamiliar with my... Okay. Yeah. So this no. one's for Cheryl, then. No. You're not. Tara wants to go on a road trip by herself. Then we could do the show some more. Then I could visit all their houses and show them how to save money. Uh, we were deciding when Tara's coming back, but I think we're going to keep her away at least another week, but it's coming close to the time. She's having... She's having a little bit of enthusiasm about wanting to talk about some things. All right, so this is for Cheryl. Cheryl, happy birthday. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Cheryl. And Betty. And Betty. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <sighs> All right. Oh, and Tammy. And Tammy? Oh, come on. All right, one more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tammy and Betty. Happy birthday to you. All right. We're going to start a... Whoa, what is... So I have to see what DJ says, because DJ has more than one comment here that are related to each other. So let me see. DJ says, I watched Jill's video, Dirty Dishes Cause Debt, a couple months ago. Since then, I've kept my sink clean, bought Dining on a Dime cookbook, uh, and we've saved $800 in two months. Wow. wow. That is awesome. You know, one thing we've talked about in some of the articles and things and in the book is a lot of times people, people lose a lot of money because they buy things and they forget they have them and then those things go bad and they buy other things and eventually when they undo the refrigerator they discover all the stuff that went bad in fact i'm going to reveal a little secret our daughter ellie has been in cooking mode lately and she's been buying all kinds of stuff but today when i was going to do the show i was in the produce drawer and i thought what here's 10 jalapenos and they're all molded and She's been buying a lot of stuff, but not necessarily making things with it all. And she'll leave it in there. She'll say, she'll write on there, nobody touch, this is mine. And then we'll go back later and it's all bad. And that's one thing that's a really big Ugh. money loser for a lot of people. I'm trying to get this candle to go. Losing track of things like that. So anyway, so yeah, we probably, I can't say for sure if we'll be on Friday, but it seems likely that Dave and I would be on Friday. If so, we would shoot to be on about the same time as the normal show. Give or take 15 minutes. Which is 4.30 p.m. Mountain Standard, or Mountain, I don't remember if it's Standard Daylight right now, but anyway, Mountain Time uh, in Colorado. Give or take 15 minutes, because it's casual. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, probably we would start right about 4.30, but if it's, it might be a few minutes later because we're more casual on Friday. So if we do that, then Friday is the weekend for us. So, yeah. Uh, Faith, in my store, they only sell Haas avocados. I think that most of them are. Uh, oh, Faith. So for the uh, when I baked the chips or the tortillas, I used I did them at four hundred. And three fifty would be okay. You just have to bake them longer. But typically, <laughs> a higher temperature for a shorter amount of time would make things crispier. And a lower temperature for longer would make them less crispy. But, you know, for certain food that's thick, lower temperature will cook it in the middle better. So, did you have, you were laughing, was there something you wanted to add? Jamie says I should get a fence like Wilson from Home Improvement and walk around on the show with that. <laughs> you need to say that comment though. Where is it? She just privately messaged me that. Oh, you need... So Tara said that somebody private messaged her and said she needs to have a friend like Wilson from Home Improvement on the show to walk around uh, as she's going in <laughs> inspecting people's houses. Oh, oops. So Ditching the Grind uh, said, I had today off work and did not spend a dime. I have you and Tara to thank. Thank you. Ooh, good job. And if you guys are new here, any of you that are new here, you should check out some of our other videos because... We talk a lot about things like um, we talk a lot about things like uh, not spending on things. If if you suddenly have an urge to buy something, if you wait just a couple of days, most of the time that urge will leave you. And so, if you're new here, you should check out those videos. People, what's going on with the camera lately? It's fuzzy, not as clear as normal. Okay, so I haven't seen a lot of people saying that, but typically fuzzy means that uh, if it's really fuzzy and broken up looking, that means that uh, the internet is slow. And if it happened to everybody, that would mean it's slow on our end. If it only happens to a few people, that means it's slow on your end. Um, and what you can do on YouTube and Facebook, there's a little gear on the video screen down the bottom right, there's a little gear and there's a quality setting and you could change that setting to a lower setting if your internet is slow and it will work it may work better for you we upped the quality of the video on youtube 
But what that means is if your system is in automatic, it might, uh, it, it might try to load more video than it can handle. And if that's the case, you would want to switch that quality to something a little bit lower than the highest. Okay. So we are actually doing some experiments on up, upping the quality even more, but some of it may involve uh, cost, so which we're trying to decide if, if that cost is too much. <laughs> so anyway, I'm being summoned because it's 5.30. <laughs> Quit your uh, Kiddo. Uh, yes, I'm just looking real quick here. Great show. I love the tostada. The package one, put them in the oven. Oh, yeah. Margaret says if you take the ones in the package that are pre-done, put them in the oven or pan for five or six minutes, it makes them taste more fresh. That's a good idea. Yeah. But the fresh, fresh ones were really good. Do we have a chili recipe in the cookbook, dear? Yes. Yep. Uh, we Ditching the grind, we do have a chili recipe in the book, and it's a no-bean one, isn't it? Uh, the one, the, uh, the one in Dining on a Dime does not have beans listed, but you can add them easily if you like it with beans. So, yes. All right. We are getting off, sir. So I'm being summoned to leave. So Friday, we might, Dave and I might be on. If so, it'll just be a casual chit-chat show. So if you have any questions, that would be a good time to bring them. So I'm, I'm being told I talk too much. So, well, you know, by our studio audience here. Andy. Who doesn't want to have to do it when she comes back? So. Andy. Anyway, great. Thanks, awesome. Thanks for saying awesome show. We sure appreciate it. And I'm going to share the link one more time for our Dining on a Dime cookbook. If you don't have it, you should think about getting it because it, it's got all kinds of amazing home cooked things like these wonderful, yummy guacamole tostadas. Oh, except these tostadas aren't in there. So, but there's lots of other yummy stuff like chicken fried steak and pizza and all that yummy stuff. So anyway, okay. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. We sure appreciate y'all being here. And we will we'll see, see you next you... Monday if we don't do a Friday show. We'll definitely see you Monday. We might see you Friday. Uh, Friday's optional, but if you check in and we're here, then you'll see us. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.